Lord, can we just put our hands together for Jesus this morning? Come on, you can do better than that. We're not, we're not celebrating a, somebody that's in the grave. We're not celebrating somebody that didn't get up. We're not celebrating someone that didn't know his power, his authority. We're celebrating the King of Kings. Come on, put your hands together and give the Lord who reigns, the one who rules, the one who's champion, the one who's alive, the one who's well praised. Hallelujah, Father, we worship you. Father, we exalt you. We lift you up. We bless your name. For you are the King of Kings. You are the champion of all champions. You are the one who reigns forever. You are the one who lived your life. You gave your life. And today we can celebrate that love. We can celebrate that life. So we bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name, Jesus. We give you glory. When we think of your love, when we think of your mercy, when we think of your grace, our souls rejoice in you. We glorify your name, Jesus. We glorify your name, Jesus. You alone are worthy. You alone are holy. You alone are mighty. There is none like God to you. How great is your God. How great is our God. How great is our God. Great and greatly to be praised. Worthy of all the glory. Worthy of all the praise. I know we all know this scripture, but I want us to look at it again. John 3.16 says for God so loved the world and this means even before we were even thought of by our mothers our fathers that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but come into everlasting life 17 says for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but in order that the world might be saved through him. And I know we know this scripture a lot from Sunday school and we've grown up with it casually. But I want you to understand today that God sent his son knowing that every time you would fail, every time you would mess up, every time you would miss the mark, every time that the enemy would want to tell you you don't deserve to be loved, any time the enemy want to take you away from what God has called you into. He has already sent the, the lawyer, the advocate. He has already sent the message that I love you unconditionally. He has already sent that there's nothing that you can do that can take this love away from you. And I want you to look into yourself today. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to look and I just want you to picture. And the reason I believe the cross is with, with his extended hands like this is because there's nothing that can keep the love of God away from you or keep you away from the love of God. And those arms are extended. And the beautiful thing that is that those arms are still extended to this day. So that's a beautiful thing to celebrate. So I'm going to give you a few minutes to get it right. I'm going to give you a few minutes to recognize what we're celebrating today. A love that is unconditional. A love that does not require you to bring any offerings anymore. But that he broke the veil that you can come for yourself. And you can come as broken as you are. You can come as healed as you are. You can come as defeated as you are. You can come in all your victory as you are. It does not matter because he loves you unconditionally. And Father, today we bless your name Woo! we bless your name for this love we bless your name for this love we bless your name for this love this love that's unconditional this love that is available this love that never runs out this love that never runs short this love that never gets weary matters not where I go I can go to the mountains you are there I can go through the valleys you are there I can run to the cliff of the rocks you are there this love that chases me down The love that is sustainable The love that does not look for my wrong The love that renews me The love that heals me The love that saves me The love that draws me in We bless you for the love 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 Even when my mother forsake me, you love me Even when my father forsake me 
protect me, you love me. Even when my best friends walk out of me, you love me, you love me. Oh, what amazing love, what amazing love, what amazing love, what amazing love. When I think of all that you've done, what amazing love. So we worship you for your love. Your love is perfect. 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 What amazing love. I'm so glad. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt you pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on. This is why we celebrate today. Cause you came, you came from heaven to earth to, to demonstrate your love from the earth to the cross. My, you didn't require me to do it from the cross to the grave, from the grave.
come on, sing it out. You did it for me. And there's your pain. You did it for me.
Jesus, who you are. Come on, can we sing it out? I call you Jesus. I call you There is power in His name. There is power in His name. When we call a name, everything has to respond to the name that's above every other. To the name that's above every other. To the name that's above. I don't know what he is to you but every time I think about the name of Jesus and what he has brought me through and where he has brought me from I cannot stay silent oh Jesus, when I'm about to lose my mind, the name of Jesus, when I was falling in my body, the name of Jesus is the only thing that brought me out, the name of Jesus, when I wanted to kill myself, give me value, the name of Jesus was the only one who put new meaning into my life, the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, he's so powerful today, he's so powerful to heal, he's so powerful to save. He's so powerful to renew. He's so powerful to bring you out. 
Doesn't matter what you're in. Doesn't matter what you're going through. Matters not what it looks like. Matters not what it feels like. I'm telling you to call the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus over your children. There's power in the name of Jesus over your husbands and your wives. There's power in the name of Jesus over your home. There's power in the name of Jesus over that situation. There's power in the name of Jesus. Come on, call his name. Call his name. Call his name. He said, call on me and I will save. Call on me and I will answer. Call on me. So we call your name. We call the power. We call the power. We call the power. We call the power. Because we know where it is. Because we know where it is. It's in Jesus. It's in Jesus. speak the name of Jesus we speak the name of Jesus we speak the name of Jesus to the north to the south to the east to the west we speak the name of Jesus we speak the name of Jesus we speak the name of Jesus to every principality every power we speak the name of Jesus we speak the name of Jesus the one that holds the power come on right where you are just call the name of Jesus just call the name of Jesus call the name of Jesus I'm telling you there's there's such power in the name of Jesus I've experienced the power of Jesus and the only way that you can do that is if his arms are open wide today and he's calling you to come into his power he's calling you to tap into his grace today I don't know where you're at or what you're doing in terms of where you stand in your belief system with Jesus Christ but I want you to know that I'm a living testimony of what the love of God can do of what the blood of Jesus can do of what the sacrifice of love can do Jesus is the power that can shake any mountain that can build any platform that can break down walls can turn lies around can bring the answer that you're looking for it's in Jesus so don't take that name for granted because there is power in the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus there is power name of Jesus to break every chain break every chain break every chain to break every chain break every chain break every chain sing it out there is there is power in the name Oh, 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 
Sing it out, you broke every chain. Come on, declare it. You broke every chain. You broke every chain. You broke every chain. So I'm free. I'm free. You broke every chain. Come on, put your hands over your head and give the Lord praise. Father, we are grateful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, you can do better than that if you know you're free. Hallelujah. 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 You broke every chain. And we're grateful. And we thank you that you did it. Hallelujah. You can do better than that. Put your hands together. Thank you, ministrals. Should we have two mail to move this thing, to move this rostrum, please? Thank you. For the, for the next ministration, I remember the scripture said that David danced until his clothes almost came off and today we are going to have a dance by our minister Jadiel you can have your seat sorry about that put your hands together as we welcome her this morning
your voices can we all stand to our feet come on can we all can you just bring this back for me please you can just bring back hallelujah lift your hands open your mouth thank the lord god father we do indeed thank you so much thank you oh god for delivering us thank you god for setting us free thank you god for your blood thank you for going to the cross raise your hands open your mouth hallelujah God, we just do it. We thank you today, Father. We give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. Lord, indeed, Father, there is none like you. Come on, open your mouth, church. It is Good Friday. Come on, open your mouth and bless the name of the Lord God. He deserves it. And he is awesome. He is worthy of it. I can hear you. We bless and we magnify the King of glory. We honor the King of glory. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. To all those of you online, we say happy good friday hallelujah hallelujah glory to god how many of you are excited about the lord jesus christ how many of you are thankful and you are grateful for the ultimate sacrifice come on how many of you are grateful that god saw you and he he went to the cross he paid the price come on how many of you are excited about jesus christ hallelujah god we thank you i want you to take 30 seconds and begin to thank god for going to the cross and for dying for you and i come on lift up your voices if you know that god did that for you today raise your hands open up your mouth open up your spirit with a spirit and a heart of gratitude and begin to thank him for the ultimate sacrifice hallelujah Jesus 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 yes we thank you today and we celebrate him listen I'm excited about what the Lord is about to do amen I'm excited about I'm always excited about this particular speaker because I know her very well and I want you to help us let us help make welcome our our spiritual mother amen prophetess Michelle as she comes to share the word of the Lord today I want you to be in a space in a place and a space of expectancy amen uh, expectation is the is the womb for miracles and if you desire miracles and you desire signs and wonders uh, you have got to make sure that you're in a space of expectation amen uh, glory to God we just give God praise and honor and we thank you God for this vessel that you will use today to bring the word Hallelujah. Raise your hands. Let's pray. Father, we just honor and praise your name. We declare today, God, that you will show up in the midst of us, that you will cause your glory to descend upon this place, to descend upon the lives of people, those that are outside of the kingdom, that they will hear something today that will resonate in their spirit, that will draw them to you. Lord, we pray for the vessel that will you that you will use today, that you have already anointed her, that you will think through her mind and you will speak through her lips today. Lord, let, let there be apple apostolic and prophetic revelation that will challenge uh, our religion today in Jesus name we give God all the glory and all the praise uh, and all God's people put your hands together today and make him feel welcome make her feel welcome glory to God hallelujah thank you you may take your seats in the house of God it is a, always a privilege to be able to share the word of God with you and I'm thankful that God has given to us a platform in which we are going to uh, speak, not just to our congregation, but to those of you who are online, we welcome you to our Good Friday service. I want to, I'm thanking God, and I always thank God for the husband that he has given to me. Because I've, I've over the years, I've been able to to uh, 
explore some sides of, of my personal life because of the push that he always gives and the support that he always gives to me. I thank God also that for this house, that even though uh, being an, an, an apostle, a pastor can be challenges. There are, there are times that this house really pushes me into the destiny that God has assigned for me. I thank God for my children because had it not been for his grace upon their lives and their release for us in terms of uh, giving ourselves over to God in the way we do, we could not do this and have all the components that we have. Amen. We're going to go straight to the word of God today. I'm not going to be very long. It's, uh, it's Good Friday and most of us know what we are celebrating. But for those of us who have forgotten, I want to make, bring some highlights to you in this morning session. Go with me to the book of Isaiah chapter 53 we're reading for initial scripture verse 5 and 6 thank you minister jagiel for that ministry it's our exodus and i'm going to declare to you one time that it is our exodus and our exodus is launching us in another place in another location because it is time are you hearing me church it is our exodus all things have passed away. All things have become new. And there is a newness that God is declaring for the house of Jucenta in this season and at this time. You don't have to agree with me. I brought my amens. I'm a prophet. I'm, I am legislated to declare it. That there is a new season and a new place where we must be housed as a ministry. And we thank God in advance for that. I'm going to get a little excited here. So the Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5 and 6 and it says, But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquities of us all. And that's where I want to begin as we have this conversation this morning. I want you to understand, sometimes we get very religious concerning the things of God. For instance, we want to come to church on Good Friday to show, to represent that we recognize that Christ exists. We will be here on Easter Sunday because we want to recognize that Christ exists. He died on Good Friday and he was resurrected on Easter Sunday to be there. We want to be here in the fellowship Christmas service, if we have one, Christmas service, because we want to acknowledge the birthing of Jesus Christ. And for some of us, we will go to the extent that we are here on All Year's Night because we want to break the year in uh, so-called in the presence of the Lord. And that's the limitation of how we see God in a calendar year. Say ouch if it bites you, say ouch. But the Bible says that he was pierced for our transgression. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. Don't know if you have ever been sick in this building, but I've had some experiences where I've had to call on Jehovah Rafi. I've had to cry out, not just for my personal lives, for my personal life, but for, but for people who are, are closely associated with me. And I have had to prove that God is a healer. 
I'm going to take my time because it's Good Friday. It's a holiday. We have all day and all night. So I'm going to take my time. <laughs> Hallelujah. So if you have a headache, it's minor. If you bruise your toe, it's minor. But even in the minor things, he was bruised. He was crushed. He was pierced. He was wounded that we might be here. If you're dealing with a more complex situation like diabetes or hypertension or cancer or any, any kind of disease or age or HIV, I want you to know this morning that Jesus went to the cross for you. It doesn't matter how battered you are, how bruised you are, whatever is your history. I'm going to bring it together because we need to understand something. He was pierced for our transgressions. It means that when they put the nails in his hands and in his feet and they nailed him to the cross, he was dealing with, it with that aspect. Just the piercing dealt with that. It says that he was crushed for our iniquity. You know what iniquity is? An, an iniquity is something that goes, that has been transmitted from one generation to the next that gets stronger as it builds and as it grows in each generation until God touches someone or someone comes to the revelation that this, uh, this practice this, this custom, this tradition is wrong and is an against uh, the word of God. And that acknowledgement is so that that individual would stand in the gap uh, and repent uh, so that God can take their place in that generational life and put on that iniquity. Are you following me? Then it says, and by his wounds, no, no, I skipped one, that's for the iniquity. It says, the punishment that brought us peace was upon him. So let's talk about what this punishment was. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Doesn't matter how much you meditate, how much exercise you do. It doesn't matter. The scripture is clear and it's final. It says all have sinned. So you and I are sinners. Say amen. So let it be because you can go home today and you're going to do something and you're going to have to repent. So all of us are sinners. And when we talk about fall short of the glory of God, we're speaking about falling short of the principle that God established by which we should live in order to have successful lives. It goes further and, and it says, so the peace that we should have to enjoy on a daily basis, God took the punishment of the guilt of our sin and he exchanged that to give us peace because he is the prince of so whatever is going on in your mind whatever is troubling your heart God is the prince of peace his name is Jehovah Shalom he was the one who when you know he was hanging out with the boys on the ship let me see who we had there we had like Peter and James and and the rest of the 12 and they were just hanging out on the river you know they were taking in our day we would call it a cruise they were on a Norwegian cruise across Galilee and Jesus being the prince of peace who he is was resting in the boat down you know I don't know all the boat terms but he was resting down there and the Bible says out of nowhere a wind came this wasn't no ordinary wind. this is not a squall as we would say and this is hurricane measure wind and the boat began to be tossed to and fro and if you're a sleeper like me the slightest thing you wake up but Jesus being the prince of peace 
was resting quietly. And after the disciples tried their intercession, after they tried prophesying, after they tried their declaration, after they tried all they know, they ran up to where he is and they said, wait a minute. What kind of grace is, what kind of grace is this? That you are sleeping in the midst of what we are experiencing. And the Bible declares that he rose up. And I would like to add a curl like Mr. Jefferson. And he came up to the top. He came up to the top of the boat. And without any drama, he just said shalom. And that was it. Why? Because he knew who he is who he was or is and he knew whose authority he stood in so devil don't bring no kind of small kind of hurricane winds wrong my way because I understand who the prince of peace is and I can stand on the principle of that prince are you following me then the Bible goes further it says we like sheep we like sheep have gone straight to your neighbor. Are you, go, are, are you with God or are you somewhere else? We like sheep. We have gone astray. Let me explain what that means. That means that sometimes when life challenges you, you tend to forget, you tend to slip out, or the people say trip out. In the sense that you forget who you are and whose you are. And you have to let the word begin to align you right again in relation to who you are, what you're called to do, and what you must do in the situation and the circumstance that you are faced with. So sometimes we go astray like yesterday I was tripping a little bit. And I waited until Apostle came out of the vehicle and I tripped with Nisa in the car. And I said to her, I said, you know, it's high time some certain basic things become functionality around here. You know, sometimes when we, when we are pastors, you guys think that we are superhumans. But we have our times when we are challenged. We have our times when we are fed up. And I was thinking a, a, a certain, in a certain direction. And I didn't want to say it out. Because I understand that as a prophet, if I speak it out, it will have a repercussion. And I said it. And when I said it, like, I, I pulled back. I said, God, forgive me. I said I'm not tripping about you. I'm not tripping about what you did or what you said. I'm tripping about these people because they're not getting it. They're not seeing that we are pouring out our lives, not because we have to or we must, but because we, are, we understand what we are called to do. Therefore, we are willing to make every sacrifice to bring to bear what you are saying in the earth. And sometimes... People, tell your neighbor, people. Jonathan Mark Reynolds said, people deliver us from these people. Sometimes people can make you feel as though what you are doing for God is worthless. So I tripped for about a second. Right, Raul? I made my repentance prayer. And I, talked, I said, Holy Spirit, why the enemy trying to mess with me before I preach this word and give me these streams of thought? Don't he know who I am? He doesn't, he forget who is it that he's dealing with. You understand what I'm saying? So sometimes we go astray. Each one of us at times, we turn to our own side when we're having trouble and we do our own thing in that moment where we are mentally challenged, right Martha? And we try to go back to a place where God has delivered us from a long time ago. Apostle was saying Wednesday night, don't even think about going back there. Because back there, I don't have nothing for you. So I gathered myself. And I said, Lord, maybe, I'm, maybe I had this experience because... You want me to elaborate on this first scripture in such a way. Right? 
But then, it, then you see, in God, there is always space for restoration. And that's important. And then he says, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquities of us all. It means that God knows already beforehand that you'll have challenging days, you'll have incidents, you'll have situations where you want to trip out. But he has already made provision for those days. Not that we're going to abuse it. He's already made provision for those days so that we can remember who we are and stand upon the principle of what the word of God says. So that's enough about me and my experience. Let's talk about Jesus some more. Let's look at him as a person. And I know you are looking for the traditional Good Friday service. Sorry for y'all. You're looking for the traditional Good Friday message. Sorry for y'all. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, let's look at the person of, G, uh, of Jesus. Uh -uh. I have the scripture. But I don't have the, 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 the chapter in my notes. So the person, I think it's John though. Uh, the scripture says in the book of John, Yes, I am the gate. Those who come in through me will be saved. They will come and grow freely and will find good pastures. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd sacrificed his life for the sheep. You guys Google it and let me get the right quotation of the scripture. Thank you. Right? So the Bible says here that first of all, God is the gate. It means, when well, it was speaking of Jesus, he is the gate. John 10, uh, John chapter 10, verse 9. Thank you so much. It says, I'm the gate and whoever enters through me will be saved. The first thing we need to understand is that there is a way to heaven that there is even a highway. You could even have a four lane or a six lane to heaven or a way to God. But there is only, there is a gate that you must cross. And in order to have entrance, you have to come through the man Jesus. You can't come through any other medium. It doesn't matter if you meditate, you float, you astral project. You can't astral project your way through the gate. There is an entrance way, there is an entrance fee, and that fee is Jesus Christ himself. And until we come to a place where we understand and we can acknowledge him, you ain't entering that gate. It don't matter what you do. You can't bribe your way through it. You can't fly your way through it. You can't go through space to get into it. There is just one way. And Jesus is saying here in the book of John chapter 10 uh, that I am the gate. And unless you come through me, there is no connection uh, through the Father. So let's talk about the person of Jesus. If he is the gate, uh, then he's the one that gives entrance. And he's the one that allows access. Uh, he is, as it were, the first protocol officer you will encounter when you try to get to the Father. And when you get to the Father, you first need to acknowledge that the Father is, as it says in the book of Hebrews, He is, and He is the one who has created everything that exists. So God prepared, hallelujah, a way for us to get to Him. And it's through Jesus who is the gate. Then it says, then you will come and go freely and will find good pastures. When we acknowledge what Christ did over 2,000 years ago, in that he took every sin that you would ever commit, no matter what it is. You know, as Christians, we like to big up certain sins and make other sins smaller. That's not how it works. Sin is sin. Every time we miss the mark, all through our lives, all through our generations, from one generation to the next, God may, made a one-time pay for that price. So like if you go to the discount store and they have a sale on shoes, 
right ladies and every shoe for that day I don't know what shoes cost these days is three thousand dollar and you can get it in purple blue green black any color you want but the one price is the three thousand dollars so God paid that one price stamp sealed delivered right your receipt forever for all the sins that you could ever commit even the ones that are uh, that are mother now the ones that are mother the, the ones that are more technological the ones that are more crafty he paid a one-time price so that we can come back to the father because as we as somebody prayed earlier declared earlier the bible still says in john 3 16 for god so loved the world and it's it's out of the compassion of his love it's out of the heart of his love that he gave his son that we could be brought back into right relationship with the father then it says i am the good shepherd the good shepherd sacrificed his life for his sheep And we are the sheep of God's pasture. Amen? So we talk about the person of Jesus. Let's talk about the principle that Jesus followed. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. It says, for unto us is born, for unto us, sorry, a child is born, and unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. This peace thing coming up again. Right? So let's look at the principle on which Jesus stand, why he went to the cross. God gave his son. God allowed his son to leave his heavenly glory, to leave his heavenly side, to come down to the earth to demonstrate in the flesh that even though he is God, he loves us so much that he will send a representative in the earth that will give us a, a practical way of how we should live, how we should operate, and how we should transact business in the earth realm you know the story we had the first Adam and he sinned and then Jesus became the second Adam to restore the principle or the counsel or the order of God then it says and the government shall be upon his shoulders so God sent his son to establish government in the earth to govern to rule and to reign and to have dominion over what the first Adam lost by sin. Are you following me so far? And they give some descriptions of what his government will be like uh, and what his name will be like. He said he will be called Wonderful Counselor. So whenever he counsels, he gives you insight from the provision of wisdom. He will, be called the, he will be called the mighty God because in his demonstration and his legislation of his government, he is overriding and overthrowing every system that stands up against his knowledge. He is the everlasting father because he was the everlasting father from the beginning in the first place. He will continue to be that. Then he's the prince of peace. But this is where you and I come into play. Verse 7 says this. Of the increase of his government and peace. Tell your neighbor, I'm a peacekeeper. Uh, the issue is, if you understand that you are a peacekeeper, you will always be in a posture to legislate peace even when confusion is all about. 
I give you the illustration from the scripture with Jesus sleeping in the boat because he understood that he is peace himself. He didn't have to be flustered by no wind. No wave couldn't shake him because he was the foundation of peace. Stand lying on that pillow, if they had pillow, in that time, in the bottom of the boat. But the disciples who did not encounter that measure of peace yet, did not understand who they were dealing with. It says of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. So it doesn't matter which government rises, which government falls. There is an everlasting government that stands resolute from generation to generation until eternity. And that's the government of heaven. The Bible declares that upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to first of all to order it and to establish it with judgment, with justice, from henceforth forevermore. And this is the part of this scripture that I really enjoy. It says, And the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform it. So whether you want to acknowledge Jesus or not on this Good Friday, whether you want to be religious or not on this Good Friday, whether or not you believe or don't believe in God, there are some things that have already been legislated in scripture that will not change just to accommodate you. Rather, you are the one will, that, that, is, that will have to come into the posture of change to, uh, to, to be able to fit into the principle of what God has legislated many, many years ago. The Bible declares that he first put the government on his shoulder and he declared that this government will never come to an end. It's an everlasting government. He said upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to first of all to order his kingdom. Oh God in heaven and ordering his kingdom on earth. That's where you and I come in. That's where your mouth comes in. That's where your speech comes in. That's where legislation is written based on the principle for those of us who are believers, who are saved, who are baptized, who are filled with the Holy Ghost. We legislate his government in the earth realm. And we do it to order it to establish his judgment and his justice. And it's not done in our flesh. The Bible says that the zeal of the Lord will perform it. So the more we surrender, that zeal grows and manifests. So let's talk about, we talked about his person. We talk about his principle. That's why it, that, that is why his face was set as flint as he faced the cross. Even though there was danger, even though there was trouble, even though there was sacrifice, even though there was beatings, even though there was pacing, there was vinegar, there was accusation. Jesus was able to stay his course because he understood that this is the principle he has to establish. Let's talk about his paradigm. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21 declares, And she gave birth to a son. Sorry, it says, And she will give birth to a son, and you will give him the name Jesus, because he shall save his people from his sin. So the angel here is having a conversation with Mary and he is making legislation. He said, look, you're going to have a, a son. You're not just going to have a child. You're going to have a son. And the reason why I'm naming him in advance uh, is because there is a purpose to which he's assigned. Uh, and his, in us, his assignment is to bring man back to God. Uh, so his name is Jesus. 
and in this name in all the earth for all generations for all time as long as the earth exists this name will be above every other name that exists in the earth and through this name power authority dominion legislation shall come that even the enemy himself will not be able to stand against this name why my mother named me Michelle Hallelujah. The paradigm that Jesus had from even before he was birthed in the earth, he was conditioned, he understood that he was coming to save a people and draw them back to God. Let's talk about the posture that he had in the book of John chapter 10 and verse 30. He said this, he said, I and the, and, and the Father, we are one. And because we are one, I am able to do certain things. I'm able to legislate certain things because there is a oneness between the Father and myself. And therefore, I am the living expression of my Father in the earth. Are you following me? So we talk about his paradigm. We talked about his posture. Now let's talk a little bit of his prayer the Bible declares that he took Peter and the Zebedee's two sons with him and he was beginning to feel deep anguish this is in the garden of Gethsemane then he said to them my anguish is so great that I feel as if I am dying. Wait here and stay awake with me. I don't know how many of you have experienced like an all night prayer or a whole week of praying and fasting. And sometimes when you're going through the process, your flesh want to take the posture of relaxation but just at the brink of time god is about to burst you forth into a posture of revelation or insight or something that is extraordinary that's when you feel this weakness so the bible says that he's in a place where he is praying and he knows what is before him and he knows what is coming in the days of hell and he knows how perilous it will be he knows how he will suffer he knows what will happen and he's in this place and he's praying. And he tells my boy Peter and James and John, he said, wait for me. He said, wait for me. Wait for me. Pray me true. Hold it down in the spirit with me at this point until I come to the position of breakthrough. And the Bible says that sleep, that sleep overwhelmed them. And after walking a little further, he quickly bowed with his face to the ground, acknowledging and reverencing God that is superior to him. Because he's in the sun form here. And prayed and he said, Father, if it be possible, let this cup be taken away from me. And I, I like to use my imagination. I would, I would imagine that he paused when he said that. Then he said, but nevertheless, let, let, let your will be done. Don't let my flesh dictate for me what should be done. 
There is a cause that is greater than how my flesh is feeling at the moment. There is a cause that is greater that will transform lives for eternity. There is a cause that is greater that will cause men to skip hell and enter into heaven. Because you never created hell for your servants or for your son to dwell or make a dwelling place. So for this cause. Not my will, but your will be done. Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 7, and I'm wrapping up. It says, he was oppressed and he was afflicted. Need you to know that whether you acknowledge it or not, he has already done that. It's already a sealed deal, a done deal. Whether you want to appreciate him for, for it or not, that's up to you. But God has already done it for you because he loves you that much. The Bible says in Isaiah 53 and verse 7, it says, And he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. If you, have, if you read the scripture and you understand that after they had the trial and the things that they put his physical body through, he said nothing. When the devil tempted Jesus after the 40-day fast, this is one of the things that the devil said. He said, look, if you are the son of God, it's 40 days you need, bro. Talk to the stones and make it bread. And Jesus responded. Jesus responded. Jesus responded was this. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that come out of the mouth of God. Then he goes again and he said, let me go up on this pinnacle and let me carry it to this highest point. Throw yourself down. In other words, he was tempting him to commit suicide. Because he caused Adam to commit verbal suicide. That's why we entered into sin. So he is asking Jesus now, the second Adam, to commit physical suicide. Yeah, this is the bait. Because the scripture says... So let me tell you, those of you who don't like to read your word or, be a, or become acquainted with God, the devil knows the scripture. Because the scripture says that if you, if you throw yourself down, the angels will come and pick you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. It's the God of gods the devil is talking to. That is a slow trick, babe. That is a slow trick. And Jesus responds. He said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. So your God is telling the devil, you shall not attempt, tempt the Lord, your God. So whether the devil accepts it or not, he is still his God because he is God. So his position was, he did not open up his mouth against his accuser. He stood there and he took 39 stripes with the cat nine tail and let me explain what this is these are little leather pieces on a strap that when the when the when the jailer slashed he lashed and he drew so when he lashed and he drew flesh came off of the body and his back was dripping with blood for you for you the next time you think about taking god for granted think on these things for you and for me the bible says and he did not answer any accusation Pilate asked him something he said that's what they say that's what you said that it is written that's how he responded are you the king of the jews that's what they say these low life Sadducees and Pharisees went as far as, as confronting Pilate and telling him, don't put the king of the Jews over the cross. Like if that would have changed anything. We have a sign up there say, Destiny Empowerment Worship Center. If I get up tomorrow and God said, change the name of the church, that sign is gone. That will be history. So whether they put king of the Jews or not, he was already king of kings. 
and he will remain king of kings. Whether you and I acknowledge it or not, it is settled. So we talk about his position. Lots of us, when we are challenged and we have opposition, we jump to speak. The Bible says, be slow to speak. And quick to listen. My final point. Apostle just tapping his watch all the time. Hallelujah. My final point. What was his purpose? The book of Hebrews chapter 7. And verse 27. And this is how we read. Unlike other high priests. Who does need, I'm oh, reading this uh, King James Version, so mind the English. Uh, he says, unlike the other high priests, he does not need to offer sacrifice day after day, first for his own sins, and then for the sins of his people. He sacrificed for their sins once and for all when he offered himself on the cross do you see there in the book of hebrews so this was the purpose for which god did all of this the purpose originated in god's love for us but the reason why christ had gone to the cross also is so that we do not have to offer so anybody who's telling you you gotta bring goats you gotta bring sheep you gotta bring chocolate you gotta bring rum you gotta bring all these things to offer for your sins they are lying to you because the scripture says right here, you got to offer fowl and you got to offer cow and all these things and bring milk. They are lying to you. The scripture says it here clear that he made as the high priest the one time sacrifice for everyone's sin on the cross. When he hung there and the transformation of the atmosphere in the middle of the day changed from light to darkness the enemy thought that he had an opportunity this one this one prophet that came this one who called himself the son this one who all of them honored this one who angels appear to who elijah came on the mountain when he prayed who moses stand attention to this one i finally got him and sometimes when we're in battles with the enemy he feels like that but let me tell you let me tell you right now it ain't over till the fat lady sing not knocking anybody the Bible declares that when he gone down and all the demons they are growling and they are waiting to see the Son of God now become subject to their domain. And the enemy is getting ready to throw a party in hell. The Bible says that when he came down, he still ain't saying anything, my people. Sometimes you just got to shut your mouth and allow the principle of God to work through as the evidence that you need to come to the place to triumph. Sometimes you just got to zip your lip and wait for God to open up the way so that there will be an explosion in the enemy's camp. Sometimes you just gotta wait a little longer under the pain and under the pressure of the circumstance that you are experiencing and wait until an appointed time has come. There is an appointed time for every man that God has provided in the earth and that appointed time came. Notice he didn't go up to hell. He stepped down in hell. And when he stepped down in hell, he just looked around at all the ranks and the files, the principalities and the powers, the rulers that, of the darkness, the wickedness in heavenly places. And all of them are waiting to give the enemy a congratulatory cup. They are in standing ovation when he goes down to hell. And when he goes down to hell, he stands and he says, look, I am the bread of life. And as the bread of life, there are keys that I've come.
down to collect so that my people can walk in a posture of liberty so that they can live an abundant life so that they can finally put you in your place I'm getting a little excited. I'm getting a little excited. And he went down and he took the keys. The Bible says he took the keys, not the keys. He took the keys of death and hell. It doesn't matter what diagnosis the doctor has given you. All you need to do is go to the Father and say, God, I have misused this temple. Forgive me. Let the key that you took on, on this day, on whatever day it was, many, many years ago, the keys to death, let the law of life now begin to manifest from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet so I can eat of the fruit of the bread of life. The psalmist says, if I make my bed in hell, you are there. So there are no places where God is not allowed entry. He's allowed entry in hell because he's the God of hell. And hell was never created for you and I. Hell was created for the judgment of the one-third angels and the devil who sinned in heaven. So you shouldn't be marching quickly and swiftly for hell to hell. That is not a place for you. That's not a place for a true son. That's not your inheritance. That's not your legacy. That's not your posterity. Your posterity is in the God who loved you and formed you in your mother's womb and put potential in you, put creativity in you, put hope, joy, peace, health, well, in you so that you could walk on the earth and legislate his government as it says in Isaiah chapter 9 stand with me today church if you have forgotten who you are I came this morning to remind you if you have forgotten who you are if you are watching on this live and you don't know the Lord Jesus as your personal savior I pray with you right now say after me Lord Jesus I have heard that you are a savior I know that I'm a sinner I know this because you have created me with the ability to understand what is wrong and right and this morning I come acknowledging the sacrifice that you need you give your life for my life and I acknowledge you as Lord and Savior come into my life come into my heart come into everything that I own and be Lord I accept you at Lord reign and rule over me and give me my purpose I pray in the mighty name name of Jesus if you have prayed that prayer lift up your voice wherever you are you may be in a train in a bus in the church lift up your voice and say thank you thank you for salvation father come on Teach me now, Holy Spirit, to rule and reign as I heard in this message. Teach me how to govern and legislate as I've heard in this message today that my life can bring honor to your name. Hallelujah. Come breathe in me and I will rise Those hands and sing it from the top. Here I am. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. In 
lift it up. Give him thanks right now. Oh God, we thank you. Jesus, can you put your hands over your head and clap your hands? Come on, really clap your hands for the Lord Jesus Christ. He deserves it. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. What an awesome word. Thank you so much, Prophetess. Can you put your hands together for this vessel, this honored vessel? Amen. Thank you so much for the delivery of that word. Amen. Some of you need to go back home and just watch it. There were so many little nuggets just dropping right in there. Amen. But we thank God for you. Glory to God. Uh, while you're getting your tithing, your offering out, glory to God. We just want to remind you that we are going to be right here on Sunday. Amen. Sunday. We have one service. Come with your praise. Come with your praise. We're going to lift up the name of Jesus high, really high. Amen. Glory to God. We're going to make his name famous. Glory, glory, glory. Amen. Also, uh, we want to remind you that um, two things. Uh, this afternoon, we are, on, we are on the radio. That's Vibes 100.1 FM. We're going to be there from 3 to 6. We have the afternoon lockdown. It's going to be crazy. Uh, DJ Glenn out of New York going to be there with, with me. I'm also a selector Birdman. Y'all don't know Birdman, but y'all need to get used to it. Get used to it. Get used to it. Selector Birdman is going to be there in the building. I'm not sure if Bird Woman is going to come, but Birdman is going to be there, I know. And uh, we are about to shut it down. And also, um, uh, Minister Yannick Adolf is going to be passing through. And uh, he has a new single he's going to be dropping today. Uh, uh, it's called The Blood. And it's a good day to drop that. So listen, it's going to be crazy. Vibes 100, we're going to also be on Facebook. But from 3 to 6, we're about to take it to another level. Amen. We're about to take it to another level. Also, um, on May the 1st, you need to put your hands together. Shout on to God. May the 1st, we outside. We outside. We're outside in the National Park. Amen. We're going to be having church in the park. We want everybody to participate. Uh, we have tickets um, that we have that, that we've made uh and and this is this initiative has to do with our uh building project you need to shout amen amen and so we want you to purchase a ticket uh everybody should at least have at least 10 to 20 tickets make sure that you sell the tickets to your family and your friends that's why it's called family and friends so we're gonna have uh food and we're gonna have the word we're gonna have dj bird mass spinning out there like you know what i'm saying <laughs> we're gonna have some other djs passing through uh we're gonna praise god listen you could have an opportunity to come in your jeans and your slacks and amen come and draw your little chair out to your little picnic and stuff and listen we're gonna shut it down out there amen we're gonna teach them how to do it outside in real style and we ain't gotta be the only high we get is the holy ghost high amen so we are excited about that. Don't leave without your tickets today. Uh, there, there are a couple of people uh, I think you would have seen in the group. We want to see you right after the service quickly. Uh, this is to do with the committee uh, concerning um, uh, the planning, etc. and so forth. So make sure that right after the service you head over on, on this side and let's uh, have a little discussion, a little conversation how we can make this thing uh, something worthwhile. Amen. We are so grateful that, that we have the opportunity to pass to such wonderful people and for those of you online, we have a lot of members online. Yes, they are members online and we thank God for them. They are so faithful. They are faithful. We thank God for their generosity and so forth. Many of them, they have been given into the ministry. Uh, people in Canada, people in the UK, people in the US. Uh, God has been raising up people. God has been, somebody say, God has been extending our borders. Come on, declare that today. 
Amen. Amen. I believe, how many of you believe that God is going to give us that, that multi-purpose facility that will house everything? Uh, y'all, y'all not excited like me. This morning I had the opportunity to drive down the new highway. And as I was driving, I felt something in the spirit. Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. But that's not the only highway. They got other highways going to be built. Listen. God is, God is doing some things. I just believe that, you know, Jew said it's going to be in Barbies. It's going to be in Letem. It's going to be everywhere. Amen. So let the, let, 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 let the apostles and the pastors arise in this season. Amen. It's going to be in Canada. It's going to be in the UK. It's going to be in the US. Amen. I'm telling you, man, you got to get excited about what God is doing. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Send to your feet. Let's pray over your gifts. Amen. Uh, God loves a cheerful heart. Amen. Glory to God. The Bible says that God gives seed to the soul. We are souls. You know, one of the things within this season, for God so love the world that he give and he give his best. Amen. We can never outgive God. Is there anybody that can outgive God? Huh? Amen. Do you know that, that giving is, is, is the next dimension of your worship? Amen. And so lift up your giving today. Father, we honor and we praise and we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for this awesome opportunity. We thank you that as we sow and as we give into the kingdom of God, that our lives will not be depleted, but, but our lives will be completed. Oh, my God. Lord, we thank you for doing new things in us. We thank you for opening up the, the doorways, open up doors of favor, places of favor. Let this season be a season where we experience the favor of God, the glory of God, the wisdom of God, the counsel of God. I decree and declare that it is so over your life that God will cause happy surprises to come to you, that things will happen supernaturally in your life. There will be miracles, signs, and wonders in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. To those of you online, they are going to put the information there to tell you how you need to give. Amen. Can you come from the back? Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 